Hey guys, today I am explaining the story behind Coed and Cambria's Good Apollo on Burning Star Core uh, from Fear Through the Eyes of Badness. This is a new 2017 version um, that they redid from when that album first came out in 2005, so this is the new version. And it varies, it definitely varies a lot from the original uh, graphic novel that came out in 2005. It has a lot of like added extra stuff that goes on, so. The other one's really short, and this just kind of expand, expands upon um, the original one. So it's redone, and it still follows the same storyline as the old one, but just adds a little bit more um, and continues the story on. So we start the story. House Atlantic has been rebuilt. Um, General Krom, which is one of Ryan's little cronies, he is like kind of a part of House Atlantic. He's kind of built into it, kind of like a transformer, and so he's helped rebuild House Atlantic after it had been destroyed in the end of In Keeping Secrets of Silent Hill 3. Then we learn that Ryan's plan is to have complete control, not even of all the people in Heaven's Fence and all the worlds in Heaven's Fence, but also all of the souls in the afterlife. And this is because uh, when he died for like a few seconds in In Keeping Secrets, he went into the afterlife and he saw all the souls that were there and he realized that they weren't subservient to him, so he wants to have control over them as well um, in the afterlife. So then we go to Ryder, he's the one who is writing the story of the Amory Wars, and his life is falling apart because he is going crazy, um, he's off his medication. So his girlfriend, Erica Court, um, she ends up leaving him because he's going crazy and he's obviously off his medication. So she's trying to break up with him and he tries to propose to her to try and save their relationship, which obviously does not work. Um, and that's, I think, where we get the song The Suffering from in, uh, in the album. So then we go to um, the Grail Arbor, and we go to everyone over there, Claudio, Ambelina, Inferno, Sizer, and Chase, and Inferno hatches the idea to attack House Atlantic because they won't be expecting it so shortly after they had just gotten done battling them from In Keeping Secrets. So his plan is to actually go to Hildmor to steal uh, the terrain, and the terrain is this cloaking device um, that will help them enter Apity Prime and uh, destroy House Atlantic without being noticed beforehand and just being shot down um, when they enter their atmosphere. So okay, then we flip back to Ryder and Erica has left him and um, his 10 speed bike gets stolen. So then he goes to try and find it and then we have a really familiar scene from the previous comic, um, the graphic novel in 2005. He shows up at Nuo slash Erica's house um, to try and look for his 10 speed bike. And it is here that his bike turns into this demon type entity um, that is a reflection of his inner demons that tells him that he needs to kill Ambelina in the story. So then we flip back to Claudio on the Grail Arbor and he convinces Inferno to make a pit stop on the way to Hildmore uh, so that he can see his old house because Inferno has just told him the full story of his parents, um, basically everything that was in uh, Year of the Black Rainbow. So now Claudio is finally aware of exactly what happened to his parents and that they are actually heroes instead of terrible people who um, kind of destroyed the keyword. So he goes back to his old house and then this kind of, he goes with Ambelina, so this kind of lays the groundwork between the romance between Claudio and Ambelina. Um, then he goes by himself to Nuo's old house and this is where he ends up meeting Apollo again and telling him the story of and keeping secrets of Silent Earth 3. So uh, that's kind of where that, where that takes place in the timeline. So on the mission to steal the terrain, they land on Hilkmar, and it's infested with all these narrows. And now narrows are kind of like these zombie, cyborg, cannibal type things. Um, and the whole planet is infested with them. And they didn't realize that they can go invisible as well. So, so they're way outnumbered and they get captured by these narrows. And the narrows take them to their um, kind of narrows king or whatever. His name is Hilkmar. And he has an old beef with Inferno from years past in the rebellion. Um, so he already hates Inferno already, so they get taken captive and they're all locked into cells, but Chase ends up escaping because she's cool and badass, and she ends up stealing the terrain for them and also freeing everyone from their cells, and then they are able to save Inferno before he gets eaten alive, and then they all escape back to the Grail Arbor. And then we go to Ryder in the, in the real world, and Erica showed up at his house to check on him, and he ends up capturing her and tying her up to a chair um, while he's... Uh, viciously typing um, on his typewriter to finish the story. And then Ten Speed is, is in the corner telling Ryder what to do and that he needs to kill Ambulina in the story. So then back on Heaven's Fence, the crew are heading to uh, Apity Prime 
and they're being followed by Gibney and his fleet of Narrows that have followed him there. Then we realize this was all part of Inferno's plan because they now have the terrain, so they are invisible and undetected as they enter Apathy Prime's atmosphere, but then they have a whole tail of Narrows, uh, of the Narrows Armada that are chasing them. So, so then the Red Mayo and his Red Army are going to send their Jack Cameras after the Narrows to distract them, while the Grail Arbor is able to land secretly um, near House Atlantic. So they land at House Atlantic, and Yamblin and Claudio uh, separate to try and go seek Ryan while the rest of the crew tries to take care of the Red Army. And then at this point, um, we go to Ryder in the real world, and Ten Speed is getting frustrated with him because he's not writing the story that way he wants it to be written. And so that he ends up take Ten Speed ends up taking over Ryder's body, and so now Ryder has kind of entered the dark side, and he's. Uh, doing exactly what Ten Speed wants him to do. So then Ambelina and Claudio confront Ryan, so then there's a big battle between them. Uh, Chase and Sizer are about to be killed by Gibney, so then Chase uh, summons the will to create the Willing Well. So the Willing Well, um, if you didn't watch the previous video, is uh, this portal in between the worlds. So it's how Ryder is able to come through this portal into the, into the world of Heaven's Fence. Um, so Ryder comes through and he kills Gibney, and he, then he captures Ambelina and takes her through the portal of the Willing Well to his world. Meanwhile, there's a fight going on between Inferno and Mayo, and Mayo ends up killing Inferno. So then Claudio and Chase follow Ambelina through the Willing Well to try and find her, and then, Ra and then they have a big confrontation with Ryder. So Ryder is blaming Claudio for basically having his own feelings and having his own motivations that aren't lining up with what he wants him to do. And he feels that this all has arisen since Ambeline showed up in the story. And so you can kind of get an idea that Ryder is jealous of Claudio because he has the perfect woman, he has all these powers, he's in this awesome universe while Ryder is stuck in the real world and he's on medication because he's going crazy and his girlfriend just left him and he's in a pretty rough spot. So basically he wants to be Claudio but he can't so he's deciding to destroy him instead by uh, taking Ambelina away from him. Rapadio saves Ambelina, um, and then him and Chase combine their powers to bring them back to the world of Heaven's Fence. Um, and then, but of course, uh, Ryder is kind of their god in that world, so he's able to go over to their universe no matter what. So he follows them over there, and he ends up um, fighting with Claudio, and during this big brawl between Claudio and Ryder, Ambelina is killed by an Austin team priest. So at this point, you know, uh, like in the 2005 version, Claudio and Ambelina kind of profess their love to each other as she's dying in his arms. Um, and then Ryder leaves him with the idea that he will eventually um, accept his fate and become a tool in his uh, story the way he wants it to be written. So then as Ryder is leaving uh, the world of Heaven's Fence, he actually gets surrounded by soldiers of the Red Army. And so he uh, tries to attack them, but he ends up getting shot. And so he's really confused because he's like, I'm in a safe world, why am I getting shot? So then we actually go back to the real world. He's surrounded by cops who are holding him up outside his door, and they shot him because he pulled a weapon on them. So at this point, Ryder is dead, and it shows the cops going into Ryder's house, and they find Erica still tied up to a chair, and her throat's been slit. So now both Erica and Ryder are dead. And then at the very last, uh, one of the very last scenes we have is Mayo entering the Grail Arbor, and we find out that before Inferno died, he pulled Mayo's memory chip and he transferred his consciousness into Mayo uh, right before he died, and so now Inferno is alive inside Mayo's body. Yeah, alright, so that's where that one ends. So after Man is next, I'll do that at some point. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I had to shorten it a little because there's so much that goes on in here, so um, yeah, thanks for watching.